Hi everybody. Today let's have a discussion on the motility of microbes. Motility of bacteria is the ability of bacteria to move independently using metabolic energy. Motility is usually due to an organelle called flagella which exhibits a rotatory movement of about 200 to 1000 revolutions per second. The rotatory movement can be compared to the movement of the arms of a swimmer. This movement is proton pump mediated. A proton pump is an integral membrane protein pump that builds up a proton gradient against a biological membrane. I am not going into the details of the structure or arrangement of flagella in this session. The flagella can be outside the bacteria then you call it exoflagellate or it can be inside the bacteria and then you call it endoflagellate example is pyrogates. Apart from flagella, motility can be due to some other factors also. For example, some bacteria like mycoplasma, cyanobacteria etc. show gliding motility. Gliding is actually a movement of bacteria in its long axis. Here the bacteria secrete a slime and glide on it. There is another situation where the type 4 pilus or fimbriae causes twitching motility in some strains of Pseudomonas aeruginosa, Neisseria gonorrhoeae and Myxococcus xanthus. Whatever be the method of motility, we have to differentiate it from Brownian movement and passive drifting where the bacteria appears to be moving but it is not true motility. So what is Brownian movement? These are oscillatory movement of bacteria at a fixed point. You can see very clearly that the bacteria are moving but they are remaining in the same place. They are not getting displaced to another place. It is called Brownian movement. This Brownian movement is due to the bombardment of molecules of water onto the bacteria. Now what is passive drifting? Movement of bacteria in the same direction as the flow of water. This is usually seen in wet film. Just watch this for some time and you will see all the bacteria and some cells they are all moving in the same direction as the flow of water. This passive drifting can also be mistaken for bacterial motility. Now let me discuss about the types of motility seen in microbes. First is the active swimming which is a kind of motility seen in most of the peritricus bacteria like E. coli, salmonella etc. They move around actively in different directions. The speed is average so it is not very difficult for our eyes to follow a bacteria. Next is darting motility which is usually shown by Vibrio cholera, Campylobacter jejuni and some species of Aeromonas. Here the movement is so quick that eyes cannot follow a particular bacteria. It's also called shooting star motility. Next kind of motility is falling leaf motility which is shown by Giardia lamblia. Just look at it how gently the parasite is moving like a leaf falling from a tree. So that is the falling leaf motility shown by Giardia lamblia. Next we have the sluggish movement with pseudopodia which is seen in Entamoeba histoltica. Yes, you can see the pseudopodia being extended in different directions. The movement is sluggish and multidirectional. Well, if you look carefully, you can see the ingested red blood cells which is a characteristic feature to distinguish Entamoeba histoltica from other common cell amoeba of the gut. Next type of motility is jerky movement which is shown by Trichomonas vaginalis. Here you can see the moving by jerking or a twitching kind of motility.
The same twitching motility is seen in bacteria also. This type of motility is usually shown by some strains of Pseudomona species, Neisseria gonorrhoeae, Bacillus quintana, etc. As I told you earlier, here the motility is not due to flagella. Here it is the extension and retraction of the type 4 pile which pull the cells forward. So you can see them twitching and moving forward, again twitching and moving forward. Next is tumbling motility which is shown by Listeria monocytogenes and Ersinia entrocolitica. Here the flagella develops only at 20 to 28 degrees Celsius. So they are motile only in this temperature and they are non-motile when grown at 37 degrees Celsius. So you can see the bacteria tumbling or say performing repeated somersaults. Next is gliding motility. Here again as I told you earlier it's not true motility. It is a gentle passive movement usually shown by mycoplasma, cyanobacteria, Myxococcus xanthus and cytophages. Here the bacteria secrete a slime and they slide on it. See you can see them moving gently like gliders in the sky that is gliding motility. Next we have the spinning motility which is shown by Fusobacterium gyrans. If you watch for some time you will see the bacteria spinning at a very high speed. Now let me tell you about motility in spirochetes. Spirochetes are endoflagellates. For example, in Leptospira, the two flagella are in the periplasmic space and they wind around the bacteria so that when the flagella moves, they produce a spiral movement. That's called corkscrew motility. See here you can see a magnified view of Leptospira intrograns moving like a corkscrew. Next kind of motility that is shown by spirochetes that is Borrelia. That is here the flagella is straight inside the bacteria so that its movement will produce a wavy pattern. That's called lashing motility or undulating motility. Just look carefully and you will see that this organism is showing a wavy pattern. Now let me tell you about the non-motile bacteria. Majority of the cocci are non-motile. Shigella species, Klebsiella, Acinetobacter, Corine bacterium, Bactroids, Ersinia pestis, Haemophilus, Bordetella pertussis, Brucella species, Mycobacterium species, Nocardia species, Burkholderia malai, Bacillus anthracis, Flavobacterium species, etc. etc. We have a long list of non-motile organisms. Even among motile bacteria we have non-motile variants. For example, non-motile E. coli that is O157H7. Similarly, we have non-motile Salmonella that is Salmonella gallerarum and Salmonella pullorum. Again, you have non-motile Proteus that is OX2, OX19, OXK, etc. Though majority of the cocci are non-motile, there are some motile cocci which move with the help of flagella. So this includes Micrococcus aegilis, Enterococcus gallinarum, Enterococcus casaliflavus, Enterococcus flavescens, Vagococcus intri and Planococcus. Now what is swarming? Swarming is motility in solid media. Here a group of bacteria at the edge of a developing colony they are usually called swarm cells. They migrate to the uninoculated area of the medium due to a mechanism called quorum sensing, which is actually a very complicated procedure involving more than 50 different genes. Let me give you some examples of bacteria that show swarming. Proteus species, Clostridium tetani, Vibrio parahemolyticus, Plesiomonas, etc. There are so many methods to prevent the swarming of bacteria. Let me tell you some of them. 
we can increase the concentration of agar to 3 to 4 percent or you can use mekongki agar or deoxycholate citrate agar which can inhibit swarming due to the presence of bile salt we can use cled agar which inhibit swarming due to the absence of electrolytes or you can add paranitrophenyl glycerol in low concentration or expose the organism to ether vapor or add chloral hydrate or increase the sodium chloride concentration or add 5.5% ethanol or 0.1% boric acid or add beta phenethyl alcohol or you can incorporate polyvalent H antisera in the media or you can also introduce growth inhibitors like sulfonamides, neomycin, barbiturates, sodium acide, purine bases, activated charcoal etc. So you have innumerable methods of preventing swarming of bacteria. Now let me tell you about the methods of detecting motility in microbes. First is the simple method that is wet film for bacteria as well as for parasites. A wet film examination is a simple method to detect motility. A wet film can be prepared by just placing a drop of broth culture or the secretion containing the parasite on a glass slide. Cover it with a cover slip and examine under high power. But, but here there can be passive drifting and Brownian movement so you should not confuse it with actual motility. Next method is the hanging drop method which is done in almost all the microbiology laboratories that is using a cavity slide. The edge of the drop has to be focused and you can appreciate the bacteria moving from the edge to the center. Next we have the U-tube method. Here semi-solid culture media is taken in a U-shaped tube. The bacteria is inoculated on arm A and it is incubated at 37 degrees Celsius. The next day subculture is done from arm B. If the bacteria is motile, they will reach arm B and it will grow in the subculture. Next we have the Craig's tube. Here the semi-solid media is taken in a tube inside which a smaller tube is inserted. Both ends of this small tube are open. The bacteria is inoculated into the smaller tube that is the inner tube. After overnight incubation do a subculture from the outer tube. If the organism is motile you will isolate it from the outer tube. Next we have motility media. Different kinds of motility media can be made with different combinations. Whatever it be, the agar concentration should be less so that it gets a semi-solid consistency. For that you should use either 0.4% New Zealand agar or 0.2% Japanese agar. When you inoculate an organism into this medium by a stab culture, stab only up to half the depth of the medium. After overnight incubation, the non motile organisms will be seen on the line of inoculation only, whereas the motile organisms will spread out from the line of inoculation, giving a broad band of growth in the media. Let me give you some examples of motility media. Manitol motility media, which is commonly used in microbiology laboratories, it detects the motility of bacteria, mannitol fermentation and nitrate reduction. This media contains potassium nitrate. So nitrate reducing bacteria will reduce nitrate and this will be seen as air bubbles in the media. Next you have Hugh-Gleefson's oxidation fermentation media, OF medium. Here we can see the motility as well as the oxidative and fermentative utilization of sugar by the bacteria. Sulfide indole motility media. Here you can see the H2S production, indole production as well as the motility. Motility indole ornithine media. Here apart from motility and indole you have the ornithine decarboxylation also. Similarly motility indole lysine media where lysine decarboxylation is also detected. Then you have motility indole urease media where urea hydrolysis is also detected. Next important media is TTC medium that is 235-triphenyl tetrasolium chloride medium 0.005% is used. Bacteria will reduce TTC and produce a red pigment called formazan. So you can see that along with the growth of bacteria a reddish pigment is seen. This pigment spreads out in motile bacteria. Now how do we test the motility of anaerobic bacteria? that can be easily killed when you expose them to air. 
So here you can grow the organism in liquid culture media like say Robertson's cooked meat media. Insert a capillary tube or the capillary part of a glass pasture pipette into the broth. The broth with the bacteria will be sucked inside the tube by capillary action or by the pipette. Now break off the fluid filled capillary and seal both ends immediately by heating in a flame. We can place this tube directly under the microscope and observe under high power to see the motility. Freshly prepared semi-solid media with 1% glucose as reducing agent can also be used to demonstrate motility in some anaerobes. I hope after this session you have got a clear idea about the different kinds of motility of microbes and how they are detected in the laboratory. Thank you.